I would like to give a quick introduction about myself. Uh, with you, Sheikh al Atebi, FinTech Market Development Senior Manager uh, at Saudi Payments. I've spent 10 years of experience in banking and payments uh, between Saudi Payments and uh, Riyadh Bank. So in this session, we will shed light on the payment foundation and uh, how the payment is defined. Uh, actually, I have been asked to make it as uh, understandable as possible. So regardless of where you are and how familiar you are with payment, this session will cover the basics information about payments and uh, specifically in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, also, we will touch base on the history of payments and how the payment was carried out. Uh, so we will have a high level overview on the payment infrastructure in Saudi and the technology impact of payment. And lastly, the new trends that we expect to see in Saudi Arabia. Uh, moving to our first section, what is payment? If we want to define payment, uh, actually payment is the process or action of transferring money or value from one person to another, uh, either to fulfill a financial obligation that you have or to purchase uh, a good or service that you want, or even if you have a, a debt that you want to uh, settle. Of course, there are multiple examples of payment methods that we see uh, nowadays and before around the world, like cash, cards, checks, and recently the mobile wallets. So moving to the payment history, actually we cannot understand uh, payment without knowing the history of payment and how it was evolving and changing throughout the years. Uh, since the beginning, people have engaged in, in, in payment and were performing payment, but this transaction uh, was not necessarily and did not always involve a payment method like cash or card. There was a time when the cash or the standard money did not even exist and people utilized other forms of payment to perform a transaction. So how did the payment evolve throughout the years? Payment uh, has noticed a significant change, uh, but recently we have seen growing trends toward uh, technology and digital payments. However, what was the first type of payment? Maybe not everyone is familiar with bartering, so I will explain it further. Bartering was the first type of payment in the history. Uh, bartering actually means when you exchange your good with someone else, good or service. For example, uh, you are a farmer who grows an apple, uh, would exchange his goods with another person who bakes bread, for example. So bartering was not easy. It is difficult to find someone who has the good that you need, and at the same time, he needs the good that you have. Uh, also, the payment was not trackable. You cannot track the payment. And the value of each good was very difficult to determine. That's why it wasn't a sustainable payment method, and people moved to creating other payment methods in order to be useful for them. For example, gold and metallic coins. Uh, with the time, gold and metallic coins have been introduced as a payment method, and they did have a standard value that made it easier for people to perform payments, unlike the, the bartering. Uh, so it was the main type of money for a long period of time, but it uh, it's also has uh, its own disadvantages since the uh, it was very difficult and also risky to carry a huge amount of gold or silver or copper uh, from one place to another, which led also to the next phase, which is the paper money. Uh, creating paper money was the most important stage of, of money evolution. Um, it is the first uh, or maybe one of the first uh, payment methods that it is controlled and regulated by the central bank. Uh, in the present scenario, paper money captures the majority of the money notes or uh, the money in general that is being issued by the central bank. Uh, the, the next type of payment method is credit money. Uh, credit money is when you keep part of, of like your cash or your money as a deposit in one of the bank accounts. Uh, it's not money in reality, but you can perform whatever transaction that any money would do. Uh, the next type of payment is the plastic cards. The plastic cards can be a debit card or a credit card. Uh, the main aim of plastic cards is to reduce the need of carrying cash or coins everywhere to make a transaction. It is 
considered more convenient for people. And uh, it also re reduces the risk of carrying a large amount of cash from one place to another. Uh, the other payment method was introduced also is the electronic payment or electronic money. It's when you use your smartphone or your smart devices, your watch, your mobile as a payment method. And it was mainly driven by the technology evolution that is happening around the world. Uh, the last type that we want to talk about is the digital currency. I know it's in Saudi Arabia in, in its early stages, uh, but uh, there is an initial plan to enable the digital currency uh, here. It can be decentralized and completely virtual, such as Bitcoin, or it can be a CBDC, which stands for the Central Bank Digital Currency, which is a centralized and governed by the central bank. Uh, in this section, we will go over the different payment systems and how the payment infrastructure is positioned in Saudi Arabia. So I saw it's important. I believe it's important to give you this timeline uh, because these uh, are considered uh, very important and significant uh, milestones uh, for payment infrastructure. Uh, in 1952, the Saudi Arabia Monetary Agency SAMA was established with uh, the objective of issuing and strengthening the Saudi currency real and other multiple objectives. We will come later uh, in, in the coming slides. In 1990, uh, SPAN, which is the national payment network that connects all banks, ATMs, and point of sales into a, a centralized network, it was established in that year by the central bank. Uh, in 1997, RTGS, which stands for the Real-Time Gross Settlement System, was established by the central bank. Uh, it's responsible to do the cross-banking uh, transfer settlement. So when you are uh, using your, your bank account to transfer to someone else's account, the settlement between banks are, are being uh, um, held under the responsibility of the RTGS or on the railways of RTGS. Uh, in 2004, Sadat, uh, which is the national billing system in Saudi Arabia, was established by the central bank, uh, but operated by Saudi payments. Uh, in 2015, uh, MEDA, the new identity of SPAN, was introduced. So uh, the old identity was SPAN, and MEDA in 2015 was introduced to the market as the new, uh, the new identity for the national uh, uh, payment network. So it represents the innovative and electronic payment in Saudi. And uh, we see MEDA always being perceived as trusted and secure payment option. Uh, why is that? Because it represents the national payment scheme. Uh, in 2019, uh, Saudi payment, payment was established as a wholly owned subsidiary of the central bank with a mandate to continue the development and the operation of the payment infrastructure systems in Saudi. Uh, in 2021, Saria was introduced as the Instant Payment System, or IPS. Uh, it's owned by the central bank, but developed and oper operated by Saudi Payments. It allows the customer to send transferred, uh, transfers and uh, receive their transfers instantly. So how the uh, payment infrastructure is regulated? SAMA plays the regulator role in the payment ecosystem with the objectives of issuing and managing the bank notes, uh, also setting and implementing the monetary and financial policies, uh, as well as regulating and supervising the financial sectors, including banks and fintechs in the payment, uh, lending and insurance fields. They are actually responsible for licensing these uh, payment players Either they are a bank or a fintech or insurance company, it's all under the umbrella of, of SAMA to be licensed. Uh, also managing the foreign exchange reserves, uh, also ensuring the provision of innovative and secure payment system. They have uh, this objective to make the Saudi Arabia as, as a payment ecosystem uh, very innovative and secure and up to the technological uh, technology uh, uh, payment and digital payment objectives. Moving to how the payment infrastructure is operated, 
uh, Saudi payment play the operator role for the pay payment infrastructure. As we mentioned before, it is a subsidiary under the central bank with a mission to develop secure payment infrastructure in order to serve both fintechs and banks equally, and also enable the payment ecosystem through secure and reliable and accessible uh, backend services. Um, in the coming slides, uh, I want to touch base upon the national payment infrastructure systems that Saudi payments operate and that um, uh, hold the responsibility of, of, of operating the whole payment ecosystem in Saudi. So number one is Syria. Syria or IPS is the instant payment system. It is being owned by the central bank and operated by Saudi payments. Actually, it's a very huge success because it is facilitating the cash transfer across local banks, offering real-time transfer for the customers, available 24-7, 365 days, even in the official holidays. Before, maybe you remember, there was a cutoff time. Uh, you need to transfer before 3 p.m. Anything after 3 p.m. Uh, should go into the other day. So uh, IPS comes and, and killed maybe this obstacle by offering the instant payment uh, transfer for the customers. Uh, MEDA is the national uh, payment network in Saudi. It is a central payment system. It connects ATMs, PAS terminals, and digital payments, routing the financial transaction to the respective bank or financial institution. So it is an intermediary role that is connecting all the payment acceptance with the financial institution in one network. Uh, moving to the other payment uh, system in Saudi, which is Sadat. Uh, Sadat is the national billing system. It is owned by the central bank, but operated by Saudi payments. Uh, it, it, uh, it actually introduces electronic bill presentment and payment system. Uh, it allows the customer to pay their uh, monthly bills, uh, either it's telecom, utility, and other bills electronically through uh, mobile banking channels, including mobile banking, online banking, ATM, uh, phone banking. And recently, Sadat also enabled fintech wallets to act as a Sadat channel provider. So you can go to your wallet, either it's your pay, mobile pay, Enma pay, or any other wallet that is integrated with Sadat and use it as a channel to pay your monthly bills. Uh, here, I, actually, I wanted to shed some light on the main players in payment while, while performing a transaction. So in payment, you will hear a lot about issuer, acquirer, payment network. So that's why I saw it's very important to give a definition for each player. So number one is the issuer. The issuer always represents the customer in the transaction. So the issuing bank is the institution that issue card to the customer. Uh, on the other hand, the acquirer is the bank or the financial institution that provides the merchant with an acceptance tool. Either it's a payment gateway or a point of sale or any other means uh, of payment that enable the merchant to collect his money. And then the acquirer will hold the responsibility as well to settle the transaction in the merchant account. Uh, the other uh, main player in the payment processing system is the payment network. So the payment network takes the responsibility of routing this transaction to the issuing member to confirm there is sufficient fund. So the pay payment network actually talks with the, with the issuing member in order to confirm is there a sufficient fund in this uh, card or not, and then takes this message to the acquiring. So MEDA represents here the payment network in our payment ecosystem. Uh, moving to the technology impact on payment. Uh, actually, technology and innovation are making it easier uh, for us to reach a cashless payments by using electronic payments. Uh, innovation also is making the, the payment is uh, frictionless, which lead to easier and faster payments. And also it increases the sales for the merchants and increases also the customer satisfaction. Uh, technology also made the payment more secure by using multiple technologies, such as authentication to authenticate the transaction and tokenization uh, or authentication for the, the customer himself to recognize and protect the customer. 
uh, it also help uh, achieving the financial inclusion uh, by making it easier for people to uh, access and use different financial services through their mobiles, even in poor countries and even in the underbanked countries. Uh, it has also changed the shape of payment itself. So we are witnessing the emergence of multiple electronic payments in Saudi, such as uh, digital wallets, STC Pay, WIG, Your Pay, and any other uh, uh, licensed wallets that we are seeing uh, uh, currently in Saudi. Also, um, the other maybe electronic payment that uh, we are witnessing here in Saudi, the NFC card-based payment, which allows the customer to do transaction by just tapping their card or tapping their mobile on a point, point of sale without the need to insert their card and the pen. But how is this uh, being performed? It is being used, uh, it is using actually the technology of NFC. What is NFC? It stands for the near field communication. So uh, you tap your card through this NFC technology and done, your transaction is successful. The second electronic payment is the mobile payments, such as Apple Pay for iOS and Meta Pay for Android users. It allows the customers to pay through their mobiles without using the plastic card. And it's uh, actually leveraging on the same technology, which is the NFC. Uh, what I want to mention here is that Saudi Arabia has a very successful story with Apple Pay when it was first launched in 2019. Uh, MEDA was the first na national scheme that connects with Apple Pay. Through the central integration with the national scheme, all the banks and non-banks issuer were able to offer Apple Pay to their customers in Saudi. With the efforts, of course, with the, of, of the uh, national regulator, uh, SAMA and Saudi Payments. Uh, so before Apple Pay, uh, implementation usually integrates with the, with the international scheme, such as Visa and MasterCard, but Saudi Arabia was the first successful story to integrate with Apple Pay as a national scheme. Uh, moving to the other uh, electronic payment, which is the uh, soft post. Soft point of sales allows the merchant to accept payments, but not through the uh, traditional point of sale. No, it's through Android smartphone devices. And it soon will be enabled also through the iOS devices. Uh, the last one is the QR code where people can perform payment or transfer by scanning a merchant QR code and the money will be settled in the merchant account. Uh, so moving to the second impact of technology on payment, which is the high adoption of electronic payment in Saudi. Uh, more than 62% of the overall payment in Saudi is done through electronic payment. And uh, as you may know, the key objective of the Financial Sector Development Program, FSDP, is to increase the non-cash payments with 70% by 2025. So I believe we are in 62% in, in, in 2022. Uh, it may be put us uh, ahead of the objective, inshallah, for the cashless payment. And uh, we have also noticed a 34% growth in the use of smart devices and payment uh, through MEDA. Also, uh, the NFC payments achieved 24% growth compared to June uh, last year. So uh, moving to the other, of course, uh, impact of technology on payment, and it, it is one of the um, most important uh, impact of technology which is the emergence of, of fintechs or the rise of fintechs. Uh, fintechs are actually reshaping the payment ecosystem. Uh, the payment roles that uh, used to be limited to banks are, no, are now open for, for fintechs to, to play in the payment ecosystem. Uh, the regulator has, uh, has formed the regulation and policies and pushing towards enabling more fintechs in Saudi. Uh, I want just to define fintechs for those who are not familiar with it. Fintechs are basically using this technology to disrupt the traditional financial services. They are agile, innovative, offering new and more convenient products and services in Saudi. Uh, we have more than 147 fintechs in Saudi operating in multiple fields, saving wallets and
Hi everyone, unfortunately we've had a technical difficulty. Sheikha will be joining um, us shortly. And um, thank you, thank you for everyone for bearing with us. It's the first technical difficulty you've had in seven weeks, so I'm quite impressed by that. Um, but hopefully, Sheikha will be uh, joining with us in, in a couple of minutes, so do stay with us. I'm just going to go through some of the questions uh, which have been asked and see if I can help with answering some of these. So there have been some questions around whether um, whether Saudi payments is a fintech. So that's, that's something which a few people have asked. And uh, my, my take on this is, um, the solutions which Saudi payments created, for example, Sadad and Mada, which um, Sheikha was referring to, uh, they are fintech solutions. They are financial technology. They're using financial technology to solve a problem that was existing in the marketplace. Um, so one of the challenges which uh, happened before Sadad, and I'm sure Sheikha can add, add to this as well, is one of the problems before Sadad was anyone could go pay a bill at any bank, even if you were not a customer of that bank, um, to pay your utility bill, for example, you'd go to anywhere you wanted. And what Sadat did was it allowed a network for the banks to be able to reconcile those payments with each other. So that made it a lot easier than having to do it manually. So that's just answering one question. We will answer the other questions um, at the end of the session, but I'm glad to have you back, Shaker, and uh, you can carry on with the presentation. I'm really sorry for this. I don't know what happened. It actually interrupted uh, suddenly. No worries so, at all. Thank you. Thank you, Sagar. Uh, so back to the to the reason why this increasing number was driven. It was actually driven mainly by the country vision 2030. And one of its initiatives is the Financial Sector Development Program, FSDP. Uh, it recognizes the importance of fintechs in the financial inclusion and increasing the, the security. Uh, and the significant contribution in transforming the whole financial uh, sector. Uh, the target number for fintechs is 230 fintech by 2025, and we are aiming to reach 525 fintechs by uh, 2030. Uh, also, one of the impacts of technology on payment is the uh, uh, on, on, on actually the banking industry, the traditional banking industry. Banks are undergoing a huge digital transformation initiatives. All banks in Saudi Arabia has their own transformation initiatives. Majority of, of, of the banking services are through digital channels, such as mobile banking and online banking. And this was driven by the increased access to smartphones in Saudi and the high demand for convenient and better banking services. And um, from my opinion, the most important uh, uh, driver for this is the young population. Uh, our young population are tech savvy. Two thirds of the Saudi population are under the age of 35. This is a huge opportunity for technology and digital payments to thrive. And it ex explains also the strong appetite for, for the digital payments. Uh, technology also contributed in the establishment of a whole new sector, which is the digital bank. We have three new digital banks in Saudi. Uh, the first one is IO and uh, STCP as a bank and D360. All of them are uh, licensed by the central bank as digital banks. So um, open banking is a is a new concept in the financial industry. Uh, and if we want to explain the open banking in a, in a very simple way, it enables the consumer of financial institution to securely share the, their financial data. But with who? With a third party provider. This third party provider in turn will provide a new and innovative financial services for these customers. It can also allow the third party financial service uh, provider to initiate payment on behalf of the customer upon their consent, of course. Uh, open banking comes with multiple advantages to the payment in the financial sectors. Uh, a customer can compare different financial services and products. A uh, customer can have a 360 view by connecting all of their uh, banking accounts in different banks or different wallets to help them manage their spending and also have better insights for their, uh, for their budget. It will also make payments more uh, streamlined and convenient for customers. 
uh, it will also uh, strengthen the partnership between banks and fintechs to enhance the payment infrastructure with uh, new offerings and products. Uh, it's worth mentioning that SAMA released the Open Banking Framework in November 20, uh, 2022, uh, which includes uh, a set of regulatory guidelines and technical standards. Um, these standards are based on international best practices uh, in order to enable banks and fintechs to provide uh, open banking services in the kingdom. Uh, the first version actually focused on the account information service. So there is no payment uh, in this uh, version, only account information. And the second uh, version is focusing on the payment initiation, initiation service, which allow the third party provider in the open banking uh, initiate payments on behalf of the customer. Uh, as, as we speak, we have uh, 13 fintechs permitted uh, from SAMA in the sandbox. Uh, to operate under the open banking sector. And I've listed all of the uh, companies here uh, below in the screen. Uh, here I will go over a few examples of payment trends that we may see in the future. Uh, the first one is the um, biometric payments. Uh, biometric payments actually using a biometric data such as your fingerprints or your facial recognition in order to authenticate the user and perform a payment without using any payment method. This biometric data is normally linked with a certain card or account in order to perform a transaction. Uh, the second uh, payment trend is request to pay. It allows the businesses to send payment requests to their customers and uh, uh, this will allow customers uh, to make an easier uh, payment uh, transaction uh, where they are uh, where they don't need to answer their card details or uh, have their um, or initiate the payment from their side so our uh, request to pay has many use cases that can fit the businesses offering such as invoice payment or donation or recurring payments or even p2p payments uh, the last one is uh, pay by account. Pay by account, uh, it allows the customer to pay their online merchant directly or offline in store from his account without using his card details. They will use their account directly to purchase uh, or to perform a transaction. And the fund will go directly from his account to the merchant uh, account. Uh, it's convenient. The customer do not have to insert their card details. It's more uh, a secure type of payment because the customer do not actually share their card details with, with third parties such as merchants. It's also cost effective because normally the card fees uh, are way higher more than, uh, more than the account fees. Uh, we've reached to the last uh, slide and I just want to summarize that the payment ecosystem in Saudi is highly keeping up with the technology. Uh, inshallah, it will make Riyadh a hub for the local and international players. So we expect to see even more uh, and growing um, uh, adoption for, for digital payments in, in Saudi. I, ha I hope that I have added um, useful information to your knowledge. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Sheikha. We've um, got a lot of very positive comments about the presentation and um, and and the the style. So really, th thank you for that. And hopefully, we can share the slides with everybody, and and we will share this recording with everyone, so we can digest a lot of useful information uh, through that. Sheikha, we have a few questions. So if you don't mind, I was going to pose a few of the questions uh, to you if you've got some time. Sure, Sagar. Go ahead. So just starting from a from a macro level, why is uh, cashless so important for the kingdom? Why why is that one of the targets within the financial sector development program and, and as part of Vision 2030? Yes, I, I believe uh, uh, cash is, is very expensive for, for businesses and for, for customers and individuals. That's why there is a huge interest in, in the government to uh, use the, the more secure and more practical payment methods such as the, the digital payments. That's why we see a lot of initiatives 
promoting for digital payments and enabling fintechs and any other player in the payment ecosystem to uh, raise the adoption for the uh, for the uh, non cash payments. Great, thank you. And and she just on one of the one of the first slides you had was showing how we're moving. What well, the next evolution from digital payments is going towards digital currency. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what's happening in Saudi related to digital currency in, in a payment perspective? So I believe, uh, as I mentioned, we are in the early stages. Uh, I've heard actually that uh, the central bank is uh, moving with uh, very serious steps uh, with banks uh, to enable the, the digital currency in Saudi Arabia. So let's hope we see a very uh, positive progress in the, in the coming uh, time, inshallah. Uh, great. And then if we bring this to um, to, to Saudi payments, so one of the quick questions was actually around Sari. Could you just walk through how how the IP, IPS works in practice? Because uh, I think we had a lot of questions about, well, does IPS make the other products which Saudi payments has redundant? Um, does it mean that if I can do bank to bank transfer instantly, um, what are the risks around, risks around that? So it would be helpful just to maybe deep dive into Sari a little bit. Yes, sure. Sariya, as I mentioned, is the instant payment system. Actually, it connects the Sariya members, which represents pay, uh, payment uh, companies like fintechs or banks with the customers. So uh, whenever uh, one person wants to transfer from his bank or from his uh, wallet, if the wallet is member in Sariya, they will use the Sariya uh, railways or IPS to transfer this money. Before, there was um, that the transfer was carried out on RTGS. So we saw a, a cutoff time uh, in the transfers and uh, during holiday, the transfer will be hold until the, we come back from the holiday. But with Syria, actually the, the, the transfer uh, image in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia has been changed uh, and Syria play a significant role in enabling the instant payment system between the customers, uh, applying the, the high level of, of, of fraud uh, and uh, risk mitigation uh, factors and uh, also um, a convenient, the um, applying the convenient way for customers to make transfer between each other, which makes the businesses more uh, practical and um, and faster in the in the payment ecosystem. So essentially, it's it's replacing RTGS. Is that what what it's doing? Uh, RTGS is still going for the high value uh, payments, but with time, gradually, uh, IPS will cover even the, the high value tickets of transfers. Right, thank you. And how does so so how does this work with the other products? So Espan went into Mada. Sadad has has sort of continues to develop. What's 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 next? What is Saudi Payments looking at going forward? Um, are we are we expecting more product to be developed? Actually, yes, um, we are expecting more products to be developed and we are expecting also an enhancement and development on the current products. So Sadat is, is not the Sadat uh, before. We have now uh, enabled Fintechs as, as a front line for Sadat. And it's worth mentioning, and maybe I missed it by, by mistake, but this is a very uh, significant stage in Sadat where Saudi payment is no longer interested uh, to face the customers or to serve the end consumer. We want to remain an enabler and a back-end service. Uh, that's why we have uh, worked with the central bank and um, uh, created a role which is uh, aggregator. Uh, These aggregators are licensed by the central bank and they are responsible for extending Sadat service for the uh, businesses at, and, and billers on behalf of Saudi payments. So the, the development and the enhancement uh, is still going on all of the products of Saudi payments, and we have also uh, aware, uh, we have also another uh, scheme that will be introduced uh, at the end of this year, which is called DIP. DIP is, stands for the Digital Interaction Platform, and thanks to FinTech Saudi, we've uh, we've conducted a workshop earlier uh, in in March about the DIP. Actually, it complements the open banking uh, sector, but without going into the personal level or the personal accounts. Uh, it's uh, monetizing our uh, our big data that we are leveraging on, which is Sadad, Sariya, Mada, in order to uh, offer to the to the to the market, uh, uh, and in turn they will use this data to customize their offering and products and uh, give it to the consumer. So. Uh, 
that's basically our new uh, step. So if I, if I just to say that back to you, Saudi Famous is the infrastructure. It's an enabler to support other solutions, um, customer facing solutions to be developed through its rails and its infrastructure. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, great. Just going through some of the other questions. So there, there's a few questions about Mudder actually as well. Um, can you just walk through what was the thinking behind Mudder and how it differentiates from MasterCard and Visa as, as being sort of the, the payment other payment networks? Okay, so MADA is the national scheme, as I mentioned before. So uh, it represents the, the network connectivity between the payment ecosystem players uh, in Saudi. So it connects the point of sale, ATMs, the e-commerce with the, with the merchant, with the, with the banks. So merchant and customers are performing transaction with the um, uh, orchestrating of, of MADA because MADA is, is using, uh, is uh, actually taking this transaction uh, responsible for the routing between the issuing bank to the acquiring bank in order to complete the transaction. Great, um, that's cleared on that one. And then just a few questions, I guess, on, on the risks related to um, payments becoming made digitally. So there's a few questions related to, you know, if, if we're using biometrics and with, with artificial intelligence now being able to replicate uh, clear faces of people, are, are these risks that we need to look at even with Saudi being operating 24-7 um, and then the risks of sort of, of, of fraud or um, being able to look at the checks and balances? How do you see the risks mitigating as we move towards more and more digital payments? Actually, the risk is always there, but uh, when it's uh, mitigated by by uh, like uh, guidelines or by regulation and the cooperation with the, all the members of banks or fintechs in order to make this payment secure, uh, I believe we have applied the high, highest level of, of security on, on payments in Saudi Arabia. And we have um, a serious steps in awareness for, for, for the customers even. For, uh, for any fraud uh, uh, that might uh, happen to any customer. So um, I think risk is always there with the payment, but uh, uh, with, with the regulation and with the technology, uh, we, we can uh, limit this, uh, this uh, risk and fraud uh, trials. Great, and, and actually this leads very nicely onto my next question, which is, which is around the use of blockchain technology. Uh, so we've been asked a few times around whether blockchain uh, technology is being used. And we talked about Ripple, earlier today um, and Ripple being a Saudi banks piloting Ripple in, in, in terms of using the Ripple payment network. Um, are, you, are you familiar with any other sort of experimenting around blockchain technology which is happening? Actually, we, we see uh, international maybe uh, practices on blockchain, but in Saudi Arabia, this subject is not uh, very mature here. So uh, maybe in future we will see like uh, serious steps toward the blockchain. Absolutely, I think the other one to add, uh, which comes to mind, is Project Abor, of course. So the CBDC project between uh, Sama and the and the Central Bank of uh, UAE uh, to look at cross-border digital currencies. But I agree with you. I think it's still uh, nascent, but there's a lot of opportunities and potential uh, to be using to be using blockchain. Um, so I guess. Not, just looking at the future, you mentioned a few of the areas, uh, biometric payments, uh, request to pay um, as, as being sort of areas. So where do you see the future focus? Because, of course, now payments are instant. Payments are pretty cheap. They're pretty frictionless. So where do you see the trend in innovation around payments? And where do you think the, so where, where do you see the sort of the opportunities and needs um, that we need to see more innovation in payments? Uh, actually, uh, no one can expect what is going on in the future because payment is keep evolving. And what, when I talked about the payment trends, um, I made them actually realistic. But if, if anyone is expecting this to be on the long run, I want to say that this uh, maybe the pay by account and request to pay are, uh, will happen in the very near future. And it's something that we are uh, working on uh, in Saudi payments. Uh, so I believe with the digital uh, transformation and with technology, the payments will keep evolving. And how does that request to pay work? So is it, um, I, I need someone to pay me, so I send them a request to pay and they pay, or is it sort of a reoccurring part? Is it, is it sent through emails or text messaging? Uh, 
uh, it can be done on Elias, which is the email or uh, mobile phone. And it can be also on the uh, in the store as offline. And it also uh, can be on online, uh, pay, like in the payment gateway. So all of these are use cases that is being studied and assessed uh, currently. Very good. Just looking at if we've got any other questions. So there's a few questions around P2P, but I think we've covered that. That's that's essentially the instant payment uh, network, uh, instant, in, instant payment systems, which we have already. Um, Cross-border payments is, is something which we've asked a few questions about. Is that something Saudi Payments gets involved in or any of the Saudi payment products? Uh, actually, as part of our strategy, the strategy, we are uh, a local uh, operator. We don't have the uh, cross-border or regional expansion strategy. So uh, we are looking after the national uh, infrastructure. 